Giant Alex has haunted Minecraft players for years, but she originated long before they were around for her to stalk. What roles do Steve and Herobrine play in her tale? Dive into the lore with us as we uncover the story of Giant Alex. Hey Steve, those villagers don't stand a chance without us, hurry up! The ancient builders, Steve and Alex, charged into battle against the raiding Illager clan. Before their time, villagers were able to build, but after taking a vow of non-violence, they folded their arms and gave up the ability to mold the world to their liking. Fixable inconveniences like fires and floods often ruin their villages, and without the ability to repair the damage themselves, it was the ancient builders' jobs to help them. The existence of ancient humans is evident in structures all across the Minecraft landscape, from well-preserved pyramids to pristine nether fortresses. The most famous of these ancient builders were Steve and Alex, who took it upon themselves to protect villages from illager raids and help repair any damage when they were over. In exchange, the villagers offered them food, shelter, and any goods and services they required. That's why Steve was in a villager's guesthouse when he dreamt of something terrible happening to Alex. His friend appeared to be ten times her former size, her skin covered in clots of blood, and her face vacant of all humanity. Steve woke with a start and went outside to find Alex, fearing that his dream had been a premonition. Alex! Oh, thank goodness you're okay. I had the strangest dream last night. It felt so real. Alex assured him that there was no reason to worry. With him by her side, no harm could come to her. The ancient builders had a custom of working in pairs to defend themselves from the many dangers of the world. Contrary to their name, they were not only builders, they were also thoroughly trained in combat and survival skills. Steve soon forgot his dream, and when word of another Illager raid reached them, they rushed off to defend their next village. The same sense of urgency came over them that always accompanied the raid. Steve and Alex were acutely aware that their old rival Herobrine could be behind the attack, using the Illagers as pawns in his pursuit of ultimate power. Night had fallen by the time they arrived, but the attack was far from over. Alex unsheathed her sword and charged into battle, slashing at the first Illager she could find. Steve spotted a group who had cornered the villager and forced his shield between them as protection. Quick as lightning, he dashed around the village, Alex following close behind. One by one, the Illagers fell victim to their glinting diamond swords. As the sun broke over the horizon, Alex slew the Illager captain, finally ending the raid. Frightened but grateful, the villagers emerged from their homes to thank their heroes. No need to thank us for just doing our jobs. Though, I wouldn't say no to a hot bowl of mushroom stew. After a few hours of rest, Steve and Alex got to work repairing the village and replanting vegetables in the gardens. In less than a day's time, the village was fully restored. The two builders surveyed their work, considered it a job well done, and split up to do some light daytime hunting. Alex let out an arrow, silently apologizing to the pig whose meat would sustain her for the next few days. As it cooked in her furnace, she sensed the air around her grow still, a sensation she was all too familiar with. She turned to see Herobrine standing some distance away, and in a blink, he was at her side. It wasn't easy catching you alone. You really should spend less time with him. Alex drew her sword and slashed out at him, but he teleported out of reach before continuing. He described her as the lesser-known hero, pitiful compared to Steve, and considered by many to be merely his sidekick. Alex charged towards him and swung again, slicing only the air he left behind. He insisted that she was wasting her time on the weak villagers she saved, and promised that he could make something out of her if she only let him. Alex's voice wavered, but she insisted that she and Steve were partners and friends. She could never abandon him. Even if he was more famous among the ancient builders, she didn't care. She worked to help the villagers, not to cloak herself in fame and glory. Even if I trusted you, there's nothing you could offer me. Herobrine threw a splash potion at her feet, then teleported away. Alex coughed, unable to avoid breathing in the fumes, her airways filled with a terrible stench, and unable to catch her breath, she collapsed. Herobrine called out to her through the forest, claiming that he wished she had come willingly, but she left him no choice. He promised that the transformation she was about to go through, while painful, would be worth it. Once it was complete, and she was finally at her full potential, he invited her to find him at his woodland mansion. Through her cloudy vision, Alex watched Herobrine vanish. Slowly, the fumes cleared, and she cautiously rose to her feet. 
Back at the village, with the potion flooding through her veins, Alex decided not to tell Steve about her encounter with Herobrine. She assured herself that she could find a cure before it was necessary for him to get involved. While slightly concerned about her lack of an explanation, Steve agreed to meet Alex at the next village, and she set out alone to find a witch who could help her. Eventually, Alex's feet found the wet dirt of the swamp. Witches, like the one she was looking for, had been cast out by the other villagers for practicing magic. Forced out of their homes, many would take refuge in the swamps where they gathered their ingredients. As Alex searched for signs of the reclusive witch, she began to feel disoriented and nauseous. Believing it was the result of bad swamp gas and fatigue from traveling, she continued on. Her condition worsened as the corruption inside of her continued to spread. Whispers filled Alex's ears as her vision blurred, and red streaks appeared all over her skin. The fog grew thick around her, engulfing her as she passed out. Oh, you poor thing! When Alex awoke, she found herself inside a witch's hut. Though the red splotches were still on her skin, the other symptoms had subsided. Noticing that she had finally awoken, the witch came to check on the girl she'd pulled from the mud. Alex thanked the witch and asked how she was able to cure Herobrine's curse. The witch shook her head sadly. I'm sorry, dear, but I wasn't able to cure you. The potion I gave you only slowed the corruption. The witch explained to Alex that the potion she was under the influence of had come from a forbidden ancient magic. Most witches never dared to use it until they were forced to by Herobrine. The only ones who could help her now were either dead or under Herobrine's command. Steam rose from the witch's brew, which she bottled and gave to Alex. She explained that this second potion wouldn't cure her of the corruption either, but it would help her control it. Alex, not seeing many other options, drank the potion. It still burned in her throat later that night when she finally admitted to herself that she needed Steve's help. By then, the red lesions on her skin were accompanied by rivulets of blood. Alex's wounds from her recent Illager battles had reopened, though she thought they had been sealed. She struggled to maintain her bearings, wandering in a direction she desperately hoped would lead to the next village. Steve, Steve, you'd know how to get out of this, wouldn't you? Huh? Maybe you are the better builder. In a nearby village, Steve extinguished the last of a forest fire that had burned several buildings to ash. He decided to begin rebuilding without waiting for Alex when a thick fog rolled in. Through the mist, Steve thought he saw something, but when he looked closer, there was nothing there. The villagers fled into their houses, disturbed by the eerie silence that fell in the village. But Steve calmed his nerves and continued his work. Relax. It's just some weird weather. Your Brian doesn't have fog powers, so there's no uh uh Alex stood nearby, looking battered and very much like she had in Steve's dream. Several times her normal size, she loomed over him as she stepped closer. Unable to believe his eyes, Steve asked her what had happened, if it was really her. An inarticulate grunt escaped from her slack-jawed mouth in reply. Steve equipped his sword, knowing that this version of his friend couldn't be trusted. Alex's diminishing sense of partnership with Steve crumpled at the sight of his sword, and she flew into a rage. Her state of mind was as foggy as their surroundings, but she had enough of a grasp on reality to know that she resented him for keeping her out of the spotlight. She wished she could bury him, and to her surprise, the grass blocks around her obeyed her very thoughts. With the new telekinesis ability, she fought her old partner, letting loose every repressed emotion she had ever felt towards him. Steve dodged the flying blocks while asking why she was attacking him, refusing to turn his blade against her. Despite what she'd said to Herobrine, she had in fact wanted some recognition for her good deeds. In another reality, she would have been saving the villagers who now peered at her through windows in terror. At that thought, Alex froze. She ignored Steve's pleas, choosing instead to focus on those scared villagers. If she couldn't be loved by them, she decided being feared was a suitable alternative. She was so lost in thought that she didn't hear Steve shout that he would find a cure for her before he ran off. Looking around for her old partner, she felt dejected and abandoned, like a monster that he'd leave in his past. Suddenly, Herobrine appeared at her feet. He abandoned you as soon as you became more powerful than him, just like he did to me. Alex looked down at Herobrine, and when he walked away from the village, she followed. Steve searched far and wide for a cure, 
He felt certain that Herobrine was behind Alex's transformation, which gave him a lead as to what might help her. Steve scaled cliffs, dove into caves, journeyed to the nether, and snuck through the caverns of the deep dark. When he couldn't find what he was looking for, he tried his last resort, Herobrine's woodland mansion. He knew the witches he held captive there would be able to create an antidote, though when he asked, they were understandably reluctant to help. His promise to free them from Herobrine changed their minds, and Steve soon had the cure he'd been searching for. He broke the witch's cage, then wove through the mansion's halls, rushing to save his friend. Unfortunately, Alex and Herobrine found Steve first, but he wasn't discouraged. Alex, I found the cure. Just hang in there. Alex had grown even more since he'd last seen her. Now a towering 12 blocks tall, Steve stepped towards her to give her the antidote, but Herobrine teleported to intercept. He'd finally won Alex over and wouldn't be giving up his new recruit now that she was nearly as powerful as himself. Thinking that the battle between them had been a long time coming, Steve drew his sword, willing to do whatever it took to get Alex back to normal. He lunged at Herobrine again and again, but was unable to land a single blow. All the while, Alex silently observed. Herobrine punched Steve left and right, hardly breaking a sweat as he wore his nemesis down. When Steve was on the brink of death, Herobrine floated into the air, ready to deal the final blow. At the last possible moment, Alex finally spoke. Stop! Both combatants turned to Alex, and she explained that she didn't want to be saved by either of them. She wouldn't accept being a sidekick any longer, choosing to be the villain of her own story rather than a side character in one of theirs. Alex faded into the mist, leaving massive footprints behind, and began her legacy of terror. Villagers in all corners of the world grew to fear the fog that preceded a visit from the bloody giant, and when players arrived in the world centuries later, they too shuddered at the sight of her. It was the happiest that Alex had ever been. <laughs>